Chef and the Punch Card. It seems I just found a photo or a piece of crockery or something, and then I think, um, how can I use it? It's something I've done for a long time, is just work on colours. It's very enjoyable. Here is a Mike Finney card, and I think you can see that's the colours used in the, in the fair isle that's in the card. And this is just another, another variation. This is just a typical hair scene and the colours I'm used are, are here. The grey for the roof and the blue of the sky and then just the earth, earthy colours and then just a touch of red for the re small red roof. This is another one. I find this very nostalgic because this is exactly as I mind my father, San Corn, in the 1950s. Um, this side is the is the blues, and here we have the greens. And note, I've used the red in the rainbow as an accent colour in them both. And it's so important to knit swatches because when designing you need to make different swatches before you can decide which patterns and colours work best together. I'm looking mainly for contrast and the blending of the colours. And just to see how the pattern and colours balances out, sort of smoothly coloured overall and not one colour too prominent. I have here some swatches I made in the 1970s and 80s. This one is a Fair Isle star done in different different colourways, just to check how I like it best. This was the same pattern done in different colours. When I was a teenager, <coughs> I decided I was going to knit <coughs> the most beautiful natural colour fair isle ever. I was so careful blending the colours that when the cardigan was finished, it was the dullest cardigan you can imagine because I should have had a, a, a contrast in it. That was certainly a learning process very early on. It's a learning process all of your life. <laughs> and actually then we didn't, we didn't have the variety of colours we have now. We were more restricted. I always, I do like reds and browns together. And blues, there's so many different shades of blue. Actually, I don't have uh, favourite colours because it's just whatever colour I need in whatever I'm designing at the moment. It's, it's not really favourite colours, it's the colours I need. My f Highland Stoneware fish plate was the inspiration for this. And firstly, you have to think what your main colour is going to be. And I chose the blue, and then you can see the red spots 
is de rijdende pateren. Mixture blues en blue en greens is hier in de pereerpateren. En de rust is hier in de belly bed. The main thing is to decide on your colors. And for this I do a lot of swatches to make sure I'm happy with the end result. So feral here, tried in different patterns. Then I moved on to use the same colors in lace. So this is a lace hat and mitts. And that's the colors used. Well, you remember how we met, Wilma? Yes, I do. Yeah, I came and you had laid out all your swatches and That's were right. telling me how you go about it. But right now we're standing here, mm -hmm. pretty much at your doorstep, and surrounded by colours. Yes, colour is everywhere. And even just looking at this scene, you could almost put together a fair isle piece because you, would have, you have the green, then if you look further in the distance, you have like a beige color and darker browns. And there's a green piece of a machinery and a touch of red could be your accent color. And this beautiful bush here at Veronica could be towards the, the lighter colors yeah. in your piece. Yeah. That really sort of sums up how it works for you, doesn't it? The way um, you just notice a set of colors in, in any kind of situation. Yes, really. I do. And even this painted fence mm -hmm. could bring in with, along with the greens and other browns. Yeah, I think a lot of people assume that you see a picture and then you have it in front of you and you essentially translate the picture into a swatch but that's not really how it works is it no it's not because you just have sometimes you just have to mull the scene over in your mind and always look for the small touches mm -hmm. that can can make your pattern come alive, really. But it'll be different if someone commissions you and asks you specifically, how, how would... Yes, I did a commission recently where um, the person wanted bright colors. Yeah. Turquoise blue was his first choice. And so I started looking for colors to match, brighter mm -hmm. colors, far brighter as I would normally use. and. As I was knitting the swatch, I thought this is going to be hideous. Because when you're knitting a swatch on the Fair Isle machine, you're looking at the back of it. Yes. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. And then when I took it off the machine, I liked it, as did the person yeah. ordering it. That, I remember you, you said this was a fun challenge because you wouldn't have picked out that particular no, colour yourself. No, I do enjoy a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the Vermeer cushion, yes. I think, was a challenge mm -hmm. too. When I was in Amsterdam, I found this picture um, of the milkmaid by Vermeer. I loved it because it shows just a lady going about her ordinary chores. It's the milkmaid. And I took it home and then I decided to make this cushion using the colors in the picture, the blue, the yellow, the green and the earthenware color. And I decided to use a very old a pattern I designed a long time ago, which was like a tiled effect, like Dutch tiles. Those colors again were slightly different to what I would normally use. Here I'm trying out some different colors, just colors I fancy. I don't always work from inspiration. 
and very often I just choose colors. I want to see how they work. <laughs> the other crafter's caps I've knitted, the pattern has started dark, working into the lighter colors in the center. Whereas I wanted to see how this worked, bringing it light. My dad was a crafter and crafting is really something that's actually been the backbone of Shetland for a long time. So I had the pleasure of designing a new hat for this year's Wool Week and I decided to go for the crafter's cap. I chose the blues for Jimison's at Sanus. They have a good range of lovely blues that blends together. The next one was Fuller. This, this is yarn for Fula, the remote isle of Fula. And this is the sheep that actually graze on Fula. And it's a strong, a very strong yarn, which makes a lovely cap. This one is Uradale yarn. I love their greens and golds, so that's why I chose this colour. Next one is Jimmyson and Smith. I did really like the vibrant browns and the coupled with the greens for this one. It's lovely seeing the crowns and the caps. And this is Elizabeth Johnson's hand spun, hand dyed yarn. So this is a special one. And then we now have two, two farms in Coningsborough that's producing their own yarn. This is Esteru. They have quite bright colours and lovely yarn. And this is Laxdale. Laxdale yarn, which is from the farm just next door to me. So this was the one I designed for them. And it's all to do with filling yes. and Intuition. observing colours to begin with. Yeah. And I think just seeing what's around you, yes. because there is so much around us, just everywhere. Mm -hmm. All the Once you start thinking about planning fair isle colours, you're never the same person again <laughs> because you're always looking for something. Yeah.